Hey guys, my name is Jackson and welcome to this video where I'm going to show you how to set up my infinite random world generator for 3D. That's my new marketplace product. Um, there's going to be a link to that in the description and in the comments below. So once you've purchased that, um, click the add to project button and I'm just in an empty third person template project at the moment and you'll get a little folder down there called endless world. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to set that up from scratch. So first of all, let's create a new level, just a default level. Um, I'm going to delete the floor straight away. We can keep the player start. Um, let's just save that somewhere. Uh, I'm going to call it test level underscore P because this is going to be a persistent level and we're going to be putting um, sub levels inside of this, okay? Now, the first thing that we want to do at the moment, we're using the mannequin. Um, we don't want to use the mannequin, we want to use the flying pawn that I've set up because this is a 3D generator and you're probably going to be using 3D. So, uh, game mode override, just go third person game mode or whatever your game mode is. And then for the default pawn class, I'm just going to chuck in my, um, where is it, flying character BP. So now if I hit play, we've got this character in here and we can fly around using the arrow keys. Okay. Um, straight away to generate it, uh, let's create some levels first. So let's create a new level, um, empty level this time. And we're going to call this uh, test underscore one. And these are going to be the levels that we're going to generate. Oh, you know what? I should have probably done this beforehand. Oh, oh well, who cares? Let's just chuck them in. So I'm just going to drop that in. Um, cent you make sure you center it. Um, it's got to be right at the center. So if you press F now, that'll find it. Um, I'm just going to have a cube. I don't know. Maybe that can be size 10. Um, and then I'm going to, with this level selected up here, I'm just going to say, um, can I save it as? Maybe not. Oh, I can. Yeah, save as. All right, there we go. So test underscore two. Um, and let's have a test underscore three as well. Test underscore three. Okay, and then test underscore two and test underscore three, just highlight those and drag them into your levels tab up there like that. Um, you can hide the ones that you're not using. And for test three, I'm just going to replace that cube with um, a sphere. So make sure you center that. Set that at whatever size you want. Um, and then I might just copy that. Oh no, I won't have to copy that, it doesn't matter. Let's just change this one to a pyramid. Okay. Um, now we've got our tiles, so now to generate the level, go into the endless world component down here and the endless world folder and then you have your blueprint component. The endless world is generated in this tab down here and there's an endless world player controller. So what you can do is in the game mode override down here, uh, player controller, set that to endless world player controller, and now it's just ready to generate. So basically all that's doing, the endless world player controller, is it has this, this endless world component up here, which is where you can put all of your settings in, okay? And it's just initializing, which is generating the levels down there. So that's all you've got to do. Um, if you're using your own player controller, just add this to your begin play node and make sure that you've got your endless world component up there and you're good to go. Um, so now we need to give it some level information. So you give it the level information inside of the endless world info data table. So let's open that up. Um, that there is my old level, so I can delete that. What you want to do is you want to go add new up here and you're going to give this level name. The row name needs to be a level name. So in our case, it's test underscore P. So I'm just going to copy that into here. So that's your level name. And then in here we put our settings. So let's add three rows. So we've got test underscore one test underscore two and test underscore three. Um, the probabilities for each, let's just have them all as one so they can all be equal. Actually, let's have 0.5 for the last one. So that can be rare or even 0.25. And then for specific levels, let's set up one of those as well. So let's, can I, how did I do this? Save as. We're gonna create a test underscore four, which is gonna be underscore again specific is what I'm gonna call that. And then once again, just drag it and drop that into there, up here. And now for the specific one, let's have a special, let's have a special cube that's made out of bricks. <laughs> and it can be slightly bigger, all right? So we want that special one to spawn in a special spot. So let's copy the name of the test underscore for specific, 
put that into our specific level names down here, and we're going to spawn that at say three, three, and three. All right. So you could put like treasure tiles or something, for example, in there. Um, all right. So last thing, let's just have one last look at the player controller to make sure that everything is set up, everything set up correctly. Uh, the tile size—they're probably a little bit too far apart at the moment. Let's go for like. Uh, 50,000 or something. The render range can be three, that's fine. Um, and random seed, yeah, we can have a random seed and the rest is fine. All right, so let's jump in and let's see how that looks. All right, everything's quite far apart, but yeah, look, here we go. That's our triangle just there. And then if we fly over to some more of these, we've got this guy over here, another triangle. I'm holding shift to zoom through this world, by the way. And as you go, you can see that we've got more stuff spawning in. And the old stuff behind us is unspawning. So, cool. That's everything. That's basically everything set up. Now, I'm just going to make this guy a little bit bigger, just so we can see that he actually spawned in. Um, and he was at 3 and 3. So, if, I, if my axes are correct at the start, he should be... He's a bit too hard to see. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my settings in my player controller. Um, I'm going to reduce the tile size to maybe 10,000. You want to use larger tile sizes for this so you're not spawning in a whole bunch of levels at once. Because um, you want to have minimal render range just there. So if I set that so they're closer, um, we should be able to see our cube, our, our sphere, sorry. Where the hell are you, bro? Come on, man. Did I perhaps miss a step? No? Surely not. I don't believe it for a moment. <laughs> Test underscore four specific. I don't know, let's put you at one, one, and one. Just so I can't I can't miss you this time. Oh, there you are. So oh he was probably just out of range because we only had a render range of three. So there he is. That's our specific tile just there. Um yeah, cool. And if you want to get rid of that motion blur, by the way, on the arrows, um, actually, I'll put a comment to that in the description so this isn't too long. But I think that's basically it. So the rest of your settings down here, if you wanted to block and load and unload, that's um, you can check check those. I like keeping them unchecked because then it staggers the loading of all the tiles, so you don't get huge frame rate drops. Um, render range is self-explanatory. That's the range that each tile is generated in each direction. So larger render range, you can see further in the distance, but more cost to your performance. Um, custom seed, if you set randomized seed to false, you can reproduce the same map with the seed in there. Um, and random mule, that's rotating tiles around the Z, but you can also roll them randomly as well. So you can check those on and off as you want. Um, that's all guys, if you've got any questions about any of this, drop them in the comments and uh, thank you for purchasing the product. I hope that this helps you make some really cool games. Um, random gen's a lot of fun and I think there's a lot of untapped potential in 3D random gen particularly, so yeah, peace out guys, see ya.